What is going on, everybody? It is Luke Beller. And so with the recent hire of Joe Barry, I know lots of Packers fans aren't very happy. At least that's sort of the consensus that I've sort of reached from looking at my comments. Most people just don't seem to be too pleased with the Packers deciding to hire Joe Barry. Uh, in the past couple of days, it's sort of come out. Sources close to Matt LaFleur have sort of talked about the main reason that he did sort of decide to hire Joe Barry and bring him in to be the Packers defensive coordinator. So I'm going to sort of break that down in today's video. But if you guys are new to the channel, I put out Packers news, breakdowns, analysis five to six times a week. So if you want to see that kind of stuff, make sure you guys subscribe and turn on those post notifications. So first off, looking at Joe Barry, I think the biggest reason people are not too happy with his hiring is just because looking at his past and sort of his past experiences and basically where his defenses have finished, as we sort of talked about a few different times on the channel, for his four different years, um, two years with the Lions, they finished last in yards allowed in both seasons. And then with Washington, they were 28th in yards allowed in those seasons. So obviously, I understand why people are a little concerned as to why the Packers would bring in a guy who maybe doesn't have the best pass when you look at his defenses. But first, a little side note, sort of taking a look at Washington. I was sort of doing research, trying to figure out what, what sort of went wrong with his defenses there. And I came across this article sort of talking about the way that that Washington team was built. You can see it here. According to OverTheCap.com, Washington spent 64% of its salary cap, excluding dead money, to players no longer on the team on the offense. It was the second priciest offense in the NFL behind Dallas. The defense was the league's fifth cheapest. So when you have a defense that hasn't really been that invested in, the team hasn't really prioritized it, it's sort of hard to put all the blame onto the defensive coordinator. Obviously, he shares some of the blame, you know, because the defensive coordinator, obviously one of the biggest parts of the defense, but you have to have some guys on the defense who can make plays. And it seemed that Washington hadn't really been spending their money on the defensive side of the ball. They had mostly been investing it on the offense. And I was reading some other articles that was saying there are people who were saying he shouldn't have taken that job just because it wasn't a great situation. Obviously, their defense just wasn't great. And then if you sort of look at what happened the year after he was fired, so maybe you're thinking, okay, well, maybe he's the problem. Let's bring in someone new and this, this defense will be great. They bring in another guy. And then the year after he's gone, um, or the year after Joe Barry is gone, they finished 28th in yards allowed once again. So I don't think Joe Barry was the complete problem there in Washington. And then now looking sort of recently at his time in, with the Rams, it sort of gives you more, more hope. And that sort of goes into what sources had to say sort of about Matt LaFleur hiring. So here's a quote from Tom Silverstein in an article over at PackersNews.com. It says, according to sources who have connections to LaFleur, the decision came down to the Packers coach wanting to run the Vic Fangio scheme that Barry was a part of last year as linebackers coach for Rams coordinator Brandon Staley. So that Rams defense that was so great was ran by, by uh, Brandon Staley, who ended up going to the San Diego Chargers because they're like, wow, that defense was so great. We want to bring you on over. And Brandon Staley sort of got a lot of that defense from Vic Fangio when he was the outside linebackers coach. Staley was the outside linebackers coach with Fangio both in Chicago and Denver. So that's sort of where that Rams defensive scheme came. And with Joe Barry being the linebackers coach there, as well as the assistant coach there uh, with Los Angeles, with the Rams, um, he sort of had time to you know, be around that scheme, be around that defense, and sort of learn from, you know, what the Rams defense has basically been able to do there. And now we sort of know that that was the reason LaFleur decided to bring him in. Because obviously, if you're just looking at his past experience, there's nothing much to love. But in his most recent history, we have seen, um, you know, the team that he was working for, they did well. So hopefully he can bring sort of that to Green Bay. And then here's another quote from the article. It says, the source said LaFleur ran all three discussions about the Fangio scheme and Barry had the most in-depth knowledge. Given he served as a linebacker's coach, he had been responsible for tying together the way things ran up front with the way coverage was played. His linebackers were responsible for playing the run, rushing the passer, and dropping into coverage. So with Barry coaching the linebackers, he understands the complete defense, and LaFleur seems to think that Barry is the guy that understands this most and will do the best at bringing this to Green Bay. So honestly, I'm pretty pumped for this hire after doing sort of more research on his past, on his time with the Rams. And the fact that Matt LaFleur decided to hire him, I think that gives you, it should give us some confidence because what we've seen with LaFleur, what he's done with his Packers team the past two seasons, yes, we went out in both NFC Championship games, but the way that he's really built this team, built this offense, built this scheme, I think as Packers fans, you know, we should have hope that hopefully, you know, he knows what he's doing. But if Barry does come in, the Packers defense doesn't do well, obviously people are going to get mad at Matt LaFleur. But I think it's a little too soon to say that this Packers defense is going to be bad just because Joe Barry has, you know, a few years of bad experience. Maybe we would like to see a guy that has had some good experience, but with his time 
with the Rams. I think that um, it's going to be very, very beneficial to this Packers team. And one of the best things about the Rams defense was basically their ability to, I guess, sort of confuse offenses. Aaron Rodgers talked about it on the Pat McAfee show, basically how it's hard to, I guess, sort of tell what they're doing. LaFleur has said it as well. They're just so good at sort of mixing up schemes, mixing up fronts, putting guys in different gaps, doing tons of different things to confuse the offense and not really allow them to, you know, get the ball down the field. And so having a guy like Jalen Ramsey, you can cover, you can play lots of man, sort of give those safeties the ability to, I guess, more so at times be more focused on the run and at times be able to help out in other areas. And we have a guy like Jalen Ramsey in Jair Alexander who can be that number one cornerback, who can play man coverage who can sort of be out on his island and sort of cover a guy, not allow them to do great, just as we saw throughout the entire 2020 season. But the Packers definitely do need to bolster this defense a little more if we want to have the success that the Rams had. Because having a guy like Aaron Donald on their team, such a good player, defensive player of the year. Um, and obviously having him helps them a lot, as well as Jalen Ramsey. And then one other key, sort of looking at their linebackers, they weren't like, they didn't have stellar linebackers. Like the Buccaneers, you know, they have Levante David, who was like a beast at the inside linebacker position. But the Rams didn't really have all too much at the inside linebacker position, which gives me a little bit of hope. You know, with the Packers having Chris Barnes and Kamal Martin, not sure about Christian Kirksey. We'll sort of see what happens with him. But having guys who maybe aren't at the top of the league when it comes to the inside linebacker position, the fact that the Rams were able to do it without a stud, you know, top caliber guy like the Buccaneers did it with Levante David, gives me some hope that maybe we don't need to spend up at inside linebacker. Obviously, it can never hurt. But at the same time, I think we need to bolster up this defensive line a little bit more potentially, as I've sort of said, get another cornerback as well. And I do think that this Packers defense could take another step forward coming into the 2021 season. You know, pair that up with the Packers offense that was the best in the league. Pair that up with an MVP and Aaron Rodgers. And I think that this Packers team has another great chance to go on, run the playoffs, and hopefully make it to the Super Bowl coming in to the 2021 season. But if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on the video. And if you've yet to subscribe, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more Packers content. But thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you guys on the next one.